Praise God. Good morning. Brother Andrew, you that uh, haven't visited the channel before, I uh, stopped making videos pretty much. Uh, getting weary of it. <laughs> I uh, just wanted to kind of try to lead you in some directions here that maybe some of you haven't had a chance to read or maybe you've overlooked. The whole point and the purpose of uh, my sharing when I'm sharing at this hour and the work that I believe the Lord has called me to is to finally be in that place where I had said that I would I had made up my mind I had committed to myself some years ago uh, I don't know if you remember the video but I explained this one time and I just want to go over it again uh, it was like a, I don't know I went to uh, uh, the VA uh, hospital there was a little bit of a problem they took some tests next thing you know they're telling me uh, that uh, I've, uh, uh, what do they call that, had a positive test for uh, tuberculosis. I said, whoa, wait a minute here, you know. Now this, this comes at about, I don't know, 20 years of walk of faith and, and studying the Word of God. So the first thing I did, all right, I rebuked that in the name of Jesus Christ, okay. I said, no way, I rebuked that, okay. Because it's a poisonous thing. And according to the Word of God, no poisonous thing shall harm us. So, <clears throat> I'm standing by faith on that. Amen? Well, the other thing that took place at that time was, you know, up till then, 20 years of believing by faith, that we were supposed to live like a community and as a family, a real family, okay, Working together for one goal and one goal only, not to build in the earth for our own pleasure, but to devote all of our labors towards the building of the kingdom here on earth. That's what I've always believed was the truth, and that's what I still believe is the truth. Ultimately, that is what we will do. <clears throat> and there will be those who repent from the labors of the earth and turn to building the kingdom and them that will not. Them that do will enter in, and them that do not will not enter in. End of story. So all this seeking and being sifted and all the other things that take place in the process of this walk of faith, okay, had brought me to this point 10, 15 years ago that, uh, you know, uh, no matter what, okay, if I'm going to go, this is what I'm saying to myself, then I'm going to make sure that everybody I meet from this point on, for the rest of my life, I'm going to tell them the truth of the gospel of the kingdom of heaven regarding how we are supposed to be with one another. And like Paul said, which is, I don't know, people are just clueless uh, when it comes to what Paul said about Christ crucified. You just don't get that, do you? He was our example of laying down our lives. There isn't any more conversation that needs to be taking place after that. The rest is just lies and deception. Anything else other than laying down your life for the building up of your brother in Christ, in the kingdom, everything else is a lie. <laughs> it's a lie. And so you're still going to sit there and continue to go to your little places of work and continue to fill up your silos your 401ks and all the other things that have to do with you and building in the earth and try to tell others that you follow God. Well, you're all just a bunch of liars and hypocrites. The whole lot of you. The judgment's getting ready to come on your little houses of faith here and you're going to realize that's exactly what the truth is. So, one of the things during my lifetime, and I was fortunate enough to read, and some of you may or may not have read this, and if you did, it probably didn't, you didn't get the understanding of what it was being said. So I'm going to share it with you today. 
It's in Proverbs uh, 6, 6, I believe it is. It's a very important little verse there. Give you an idea just how stupid most of you are. You don't study the Word of God to find out what God's will is. You look to make an excuse for your own lives. Your own existence. No, there is no excuse for you, old man. None. Proverbs 6, 6. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no captain, overseer, or ruler, provides her supplies in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. How long will you slumber, O sluggard? When will you rise from your sleep? A little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall your poverty come on you like a prowler and your need like an armed man. That's what's getting ready to happen to you and your little households of faith. A worthless person, a wicked man, walks with a perverse mouth. Goes on to talk about different things, but I wanted to bring your attention to that. Because I want to also include, you know, many times the Word of God will have all kinds of different little things that will lead you in the direction of finding the truth yourself. But it won't come right out and say it. Because he's wanting us to go and do what he told us to do. He don't want to give you the answer. He wants you to go seek it out. So I did. Well, guess what else about an ant that takes place? That isn't written in there. It says it, but if you, you'll miss it. It says it has no captain overseer or ruler. Now am I saying that Christ isn't the head? Absolutely. But we're told in wisdom we don't need a pastor, we don't need an elder, we don't need all these different things. The ant don't, but we do. Why? Well, because we just want to have a lying excuse. We were told to go look at the ant. And I'm going to tell you what about ants. Not only do, do they do they do exactly what this word says, but they do another thing too. They all work together, building their little community. No individual ant worries about what he's got or what he ain't got. They all work together as one. Slugger. Jacob was a worm, too. A worm crawls on the ground. <laughs> so I was checking things out. I came across a little Jeremiah thing here. I think Jeremiah 5 and 6 are, are wonderful things. This whole word's a wonderful thing. If and when you get out of uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which opens up the doors to the church in Acts, Okay, and you go through Acts, all right, you'll open up the door to the Old Testament, and then you'll come around full circle, okay, right back where you began for, and that's that circle. And you just keep going back to it, led by the Spirit of God, pick that word up, start reading it, all right, and gain wisdom, understanding. For some of you, anyway. So if in your hearts you're seeking for the kingdom of heaven, and you ain't found it, well, maybe it's because you haven't looked to your brother. And he hadn't looked to you. Because if the two of you start looking to each other, and start doing what the word of God says to do, you'd have the kingdom of heaven right there with you. But you don't know to do that. Because nobody tells you to. Nobody was supposed to have to tell you. You're supposed to know it in your own heart. I don't care what prophecies and all this other stuff that's going on. Read what the Word says about all the prophets and all that stuff about what's going to happen. 
They're as worthless as the priest, as the pastor. They're all worthless. So, I made up my mind that no matter what I was going to, I was going to share, continue to share this Christ crucified, which means lay down your lives. It don't mean to build any earth, it means lay down your lives. That's what it means. And anything other than that is a lie. You're liars and thieves and worthless slaves. Period. End of story, nothing else. And I can assure you that when the sons and daughters appear, the man-child company, you're not going to enter in if you don't lay it all down. You ain't getting through this, son. I'll tell you that very frankly. You're going to be required to bring the whole harvest in or just hit the road. Nobody's coming in without having laid down their hearts, mind, and soul, spirit, soul, and body, completely everything in this earth. Nobody's entering in if they don't do it. They get, play time's over. Play time's over. It's going to get real real here real quick. And when it does, don't go looking and running to your pastors or your prophets or anybody else that might claim to be speaking the Word of God. You need to look inside your heart and that Word and find out what a crucified life means. And turn away from everything else but that. <sighs> oh, children of Benjamin, gather yourselves to flee from the midst of Jerusalem. Blow the trumpet in Tekoia. Tekoia. Whatever. You know, blow the trumpet. Wherever it's from. Set up a signal fire. In Beth Hetherim, for disaster appears out of the north. That's judgment, brother, out of the north. Anytime you see something come from the north, it's judgment. And that's what's coming. Households of faith are getting ready to be judged. It's coming from the north. Judgment. For disaster appears out of the north, a great destruction. I've likened the daughter of Zion to a lovely and delicate woman. The shepherds and their flocks shall come in her, come to her. They shall pitch their tents against her all around. Each one shall pass her in his own place. Prepare war against her. Rise and let us go up at noon. Woe to us, for the day goes away, for the shadows of the evening are lengthening. Arise and let us go by night, and let us destroy her palaces. For thus says the Lord host, cut down trees and build a mound against Jerusalem. This is the city to be punished. Households of faith. She is full of oppression in her midst, as a fountain wells up with water. So she wells up with her wickedness. Violence and plundering are heard in her. Before me continually are grief and wounds. Be instructed, O Jerusalem. Least my soul depart from you, least I make you desolate, a land not inhabited. One of these days, you guys, you know how it's, it's coming, it's coming. I don't have to prophesy to you. You guys still need prophets? When are you going to start to read this word? No captains or rulers. You don't need them. Jesus Christ is the head. You got the Holy Spirit. But you're still going to run over the prophets. You know why? Because they prophesy sweet and wonderful things to you. They're leading you to believe that everything is fine and well. It's not fine and well, folks. I've been saying this to you. I don't know for how many months, which is why, you know, between the Lord and I, I more or less, I've just, you know, I've gotten away from it. Gotten away from it. Because you guys just ain't going to get it straight because it ain't in your hearts. You're all a bunch of liars, hypocrites, thieves. 
If you weren't, you'd be doing what the Word tells you to do right there in the community you're at. You'd be doing exactly what I'm telling, saying, okay? You'd be doing, you wouldn't be, you're talking about, you know what I get on this internet? I hear people talking about uh, all this gang uh, stalking and everything else to do with, you know, like the devil is everywhere and God is nowhere. Praise God. Well, you just keep worrying about what's going on out there in the world and about all these gang stalkers and all this other ridiculous foolishness that you're dealing with and call yourselves faithful, faith-believing. You know, even if you're faithless and worthless, God's still faithful. All you have are... <laughs> All this is to do is to bring it to the point where it don't matter no more. What does it matter if you die? But that your soul might be saved. When you get to that point, trust me, he can't bother with you. If he does, it don't bother you. Because you're dead. I don't know. Amen. So, that's what I made up my mind 10, 12 years ago. Well, probably almost 15 years ago now. But uh, I don't care who it was. So I went back to that little church I was talking about, and sure enough, <laughs> you know, because they didn't plant their seed, all right, continue to plant the seed of the ministry that they had going there. It didn't, it, didn't, it didn't come to fruit. Well, that's what I've been doing, planting seeds. I don't know if anybody knows that or not. <laughs> Amen, Jesus. Because I'm going to get me a harvest here coming next year. I'm going to get me a harvest. For the seeds of the kingdom of heaven are being planted. City of God coming down, heavenly Jerusalem. And you are not going to enter in. And you can think all you want to think and believe all you want to believe, but you ain't entering in. You want to come with everything you have and lay it all down at the feet of Christ. Amen, Jesus. And that means your whole life, spirit, soul, and body. And don't sit there and say you're doing it because you're not. If you're just doing it, you'd gather two or more together and you'd really have a thing going on then, wouldn't you? No matter what threat thrown at you, follow through with it. But you're not going to do that. Because you have no faith. <laughs> you read the Word of God, it's, it's, why bother to read it? <clears throat> you don't really want to know what the truth is. <coughs> Christ crucified. Go look at the end. That's the truth. There ain't no more. You don't need to know anymore. Lay down your lives, start working like a little ant together as one, and you'll be okay. If you don't, what little you got is going to get taken from you. So, I hope you all have a nice day. Yeah, well, you know, Brother Andrew, you want to preach love. Teach him to love on it, because you wouldn't know it if it hits you in the head in the first place.